Hello. In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Jaguar E-Pace, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Jaguar iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide for warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons and features. It's a great source of immediate information. When a question pops into your head or you just see a button and wonder, well, what does that do? Another download is the Jaguar Remote app. Your car comes with a SIM pre-installed by the retailer who should have spoken to you about the setup of your account that enables many of the intelligent features on the car. OK, let's start then with the smart key. Lock and unlock seems pretty obvious with a reassuring click responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car, pressing twice will double lock. This means the car cannot be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. Next, there is a button to unlock just the boot. If you have a powered tailgate, this will open or close the tailgate automatically, so do ensure that there is space for it to safely operate. There are sensors that will stop it if obstructed, but you'll notice that I use my arm rather than my head to demonstrate that. Powered tailgates can also be operated by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, and a button on the back of the tailgate itself. If you wish to adjust the height the tailgate opens to, if for example you have a garage with a low ceiling, reposition the tailgate to the desired height and hold the button on the tailgate until you hear a beep. This will store that height to memory. If you have the hands-free gesture tailgate, so long as the smart key is in your pocket, sweeping your foot under the corner of the car will trigger the tailgate to open or close. Next, there is a handy button to trigger the lights. So if you're approaching the car in the dark or simply trying to find it in a dark car park, this will switch the lights on. By default, they will stay on for 30 seconds. This can be extended up to four minutes if you want using the instrument panel in the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights and they'll remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. The final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by holding the button for a further three seconds. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the instrument panel options. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within a foot or so of the car, as soon as you put your hand around the door handle, the doors will unlock. When you leave the car, place your thumb on the end of the door handle to secure the vehicle. Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric, using the joystick on the right hand side of the steering column, or manual. Pull the lever on the underside of the steering column down, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then push the lever up to lock the steering wheel in place. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons, and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, if you have power folding mirrors, pushing both buttons together will fold them in. Useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything's adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press the M button, and then within five seconds, press one of the numbered memory settings. You'll hear a chime to confirm that it's saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing these numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door. Locking the operation of the windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. 
pull forward for screen wash. The outer collar operates the rear wiper and the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. If your car is fitted with high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam illumination everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control, pressing set while travelling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up but when you release it will return to set speed. Pressing plus or minus will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been cancelled, pressing resume will return the car to the last set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. If they're travelling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The buttons on the left and right will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be travelling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic restarts within three seconds, your car will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that, and you'll need to give the car permission to go with a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. If the heated steering wheel is fitted, the control will be found here. On the left side, there are buttons to control volume and then buttons to skip tracks or change radio stations. The menu button triggers the instrument panel menus, allowing configuration of safety systems, heads up display and driver convenience features, whilst the outside buttons then control navigation through these menus. Explore these options to set the car up to your preferences. The phone icon will answer a call or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. Pressing it during a call will end the call. A quick press on the voice control button will allow you to use voice commands. Just wait for the chime and then say call home. A full list of the available commands can be accessed on the main infotainment screen. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pressing the start button. For manual cars, press the clutch. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you switch the car on, the 10-inch infotainment screen will display three main options, navigation, media and telephone. If you haven't already paired a phone, it will prompt you to do so. Tap on the phone tab and then open Bluetooth devices on your phone and select Jaguar ePace. Accept pairing on both the phone and the screen and from now on it should automatically pair each time you get in the car, allowing hands-free calls, voice dialing and music streaming over Bluetooth. Text messages can be displayed on the main screen and a soft key allows for them to be read aloud. On Apple phones, it's necessary to enable this feature by selecting Settings and Bluetooth, then selecting the connection to the vehicle and enabling Show Notifications. If you prefer, connecting your phone with a cable will allow Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to mirror your phone screen on the car's infotainment system. A long press of the voice command button on the steering wheel will then connect you to your phone's voice assistant. Going back to the home page, tapping on the Media tab will take us to the DAB radio. Tapping Source will reveal the phone that you've just paired as a possible audio source. Radio stations can be easily selected from the menu, or you can simply use the voice commands from the steering wheel. Tune radio to BBC Radio 2. The third option from the home screen is the Navigation Pro system, standard from S level upwards. To input a new destination, tap on the magnifying glass and then type any postcode, address or point of interest into the search box at the top of the screen. You can also search for businesses and transport links, hotels and restaurants. Where possible, the system will show TripAdvisor reviews. Destinations can be easily set by voice. Navigation, take me to 33 Baker Street, London. As well as appearing on the main 10-inch screen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the cluster display in front of the driver. 
If the car is fitted with the interactive driver display, the screen can be reconfigured for a one or two dial display by selecting menu and selecting display options. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. When delivered to customers, ePACE is specified with navigation as supplied with a 4G data connection to allow over the air updates of the infotainment systems and maps and provide live traffic, flight information and internet search. When the system has an update available, it will alert the driver on the main screen and ask for permission to update when you switch off the engine. Only agree at a convenient time as the car must then remain switched off and locked for up to 30 minutes whilst the update is applied. Swiping to the left from the home screen reveals additional features such as 4x4 information and driving efficiency analysis and options for smart settings. The car can be set to recognise different drivers either by different smart keys or the signal from their mobile phone so the system can develop separate profiles for each driver's preferences. If memory seats are fitted, this starts with automatically putting the seat in the correct position for each driver. It can also analyse behaviour to pre-select navigation routes based on your regular routine, store audio preferences and remember climate settings. So the car might automatically put the heated seats on when it's below 6 degrees outside. Remember that you listen to a particular radio station on the way to work, but listen to a podcast on the way home. Know that on Thursday you come home via the gym and set the navigation accordingly. It will also remember that you like a one dial display, but your partner prefers two dials with the map shown between them. Obviously, this involves storing a level of personal data. So when setting the system up, you can choose what data is stored on each profile. If you don't want it to store location data or information on your phone calling habits, just deselect these options. The panel below the touchscreen is dominated by three large dials. The centre dial controls fan blower speed, whilst the left and right dials specify temperature for passenger and driver climate control. Pressing these dials in will toggle control for the heated seats. Buttons above the dial control front and rear heated windscreens and air recirculation. Jaguar E-Pace features a pistol grip gear selector. Press the brake, squeeze the trigger and pull towards you to engage drive, push away to engage reverse. Shifting towards you and nudging to the left will enable sport mode. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto gears longer to give punchier performance. You can manually shift up and down the auto gearbox using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. To return the car to automatic operation, just hold the right paddle down for three seconds. When you come to a stop, just press the button on top to put it back in park. To the side of the gear shift, you'll find a switch to control drive modes. Set to comfort as standard, Shifting the switch forwards and backwards will cycle through dynamic, eco and the rain, ice, snow setting, useful for low traction surfaces. Each mode will affect the power delivery, gear shifting and traction control to give the best possible control and response. More information about these modes and the all surface progress control can be found on the iGUIDE app. The electronic park brake will disengage automatically when you drive away and re-engage when you switch the engine off. A manual override control is located by the driver's knee. When driving, be aware that a start-stop system is standard, so the engine will cut out when you come to a stop, instantly restarting in the time it takes for your foot to move from the brake to the accelerator when you pull away. This can be overridden with a control on the lower panel, but it delivers a surprisingly high fuel saving and helps reduce air pollution in cities and towns. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally, and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel, it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol, it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally, the system may have a message saying, drive to clear. This is most common on diesels, which have been used for predominantly short, low-speed journeys, in which case they need a blast down a dual carriageway. For petrols, it happens when they've been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detect other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. Cars fitted with adaptive cruise control have a high-speed emergency braking system. The lane keep system will provide a torque steer back into the lane if the car thinks you're drifting beyond the lane markers, so it's important to indicate when changing lane.
If blind spot assist is fitted, the door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system, lighting up when a vehicle is travelling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. These driver aids are designed to intervene when there is no input from the driver, which is surprisingly hard to simulate, so please don't try to test these systems. Any input from the driver will override them, and they do not reduce the driver's responsibility to drive safely and attentively. They can be deactivated, but as all of them have been shown to save lives both inside and outside the vehicle, they're switched on by default and we recommend leaving them that way. For additional safety, in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the fuel safety cutoff is activated, the car will automatically contact emergency services, sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right hand button above the rear view mirror. The left hand button summons breakdown assist. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. When refueling, simply press the filler flap. So long as the car is unlocked, it will open. A smart mechanism will prevent filling with the wrong fuel, but as an additional reminder, diesel cars will have an additional spout for topping up with diesel exhaust fluid. Warnings will flash up on the information display to let you know when you're running out. You get about a thousand miles notice. And if it runs out as a legal requirement, the engine will not start. The remote app provides monitoring of many systems. When you first run the app, there is a quick start guide to aid setup, and then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, tells you how much fuel is in the tank, reports the last parked location of the car so you can always find your way back to it, and it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. So if you're tracking mileage for business use, well, it's really easy to keep track of. It also provides remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in summer before you get in, or warming and de-icing the car in winter whilst keeping the car fully secure. Because this feature starts the engine, it is only available on cars with auto gearboxes. This video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the iGuide app or videos on our YouTube channel to find out more, or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Jaguar E-Pace.